Hey, what's up everyone? So it's the first video of this new year and I have a pretty cool topic for you because today we are going to see how we can use SwiftUI preview system even when we are working with UIKit components. But before we focus on this topic, I want to take the time to thank the sponsor for this video. So this video is sponsored by Stream. If you have never heard of Stream, well, they offer a solution to easily integrate a chat feature inside your iOS app. And as you can see on the screen right now, here are a few examples of what can be achieved with Stream's chat technology. And if you are interested in learning more about Stream's chat solution, well, you have a link in the description and you can just check it out to learn more about their product. Once again, a big thank you to Stream for sponsoring this video. And now it's time for us well to focus on the main topic of the video. So if I want to show you how we can use a SwiftUI preview with a UIKit view controller, well, I actually need a UIKit view controller. So the choice I made is to reuse this view controller. So it's a view controller I used in my live stream at the end of last year. So when I showed you how you could use a sync await on iOS 13. And so if you remember this view controller, what it does is that it makes a network calls and it displays a list of upcoming movies that will be released in theaters soon. And so what I want us to do now, well, is to be able to display this view controller inside a SwiftUI preview. So let's move back to the empty file. So the view controller underscore preview.swift file. And well, let us get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is to introduce some conditional compilation. So it's going to look like this. And then I need to add also an and if. And what this does is that, well, it says that the code that is inside the scope of this hashtag if will only be compiled if this condition right here is met. And as you can see, the condition is that, well, the compiler can import the framework SwiftUI and we are in debug. And the goal of using this conditional compilation is that, well, if I try to build my project with a Swift compiler that cannot import SwiftUI, I will not have an error. And well, the code that is here will simply be ignored by the compiler. Okay, so now that this is set in place, well, now I can start by first, well, importing SwiftUI because I'm going to need to use SwiftUI to have a SwiftUI preview. And so, well, before I create my preview, the first thing I need to do is to actually make my UI view controller, well, compatible, accessible from a preview. And the way to do it is actually, well, fairly easy because there is already a mechanism built into SwiftUI to embed UIKit view in a SwiftUI context. And that mechanism is to conform to the protocol UI view controller representable. So this is how it looks like. As you can see, I am creating a struct, so view controller representable, and that struct is going to implement the protocol UI view controller representable. And now, well, I guess that if you have already use SwiftUI in an application and you had to use UI view controller repentable, you are already familiar with what I'm going to have to do next. So I'm going to have to implement the two methods that are required by this protocol. So the first one is called make UI view controller. So the goal of this method is to create an instance of my view controller and to return it. So basically SwiftUI calls this method when it needs an instance and then SwiftUI takes care of managing the life cycle of this instance. And if we take a look at the implementation of the method, as you can see, I am instantiating my main storyboard and then, well, I get the initial view controller in my storyboard. Then there is a second method I need to implement and it's the method called update UI view controller. So actually in my case, it's going to be fairly easy because I don't need to do anything inside this method. And the reason why this method is empty is actually fairly simple. It's simply because, well, there is no external state that drives the content of my view controller. And so, well, now that we have implemented this view controller reprintable type that lets us, well, use our view controller in a SwiftUI context, well, it's time that we use this mechanism in order well, to display our view controller in a SwiftUI preview. And as you're going to see, the code to implement this preview is actually fairly simple. Because as you can see, I just have to implement a new type that implements preview provider. So just for like any regular SwiftUI preview. And then inside the previews, well, I just return an instance of view controller reprintable. And that's it. I don't need to do anything else. As you can see, I've just here added a modifier to have the dark mode, but that's just because it's going to look better with the dark Xcode. You could totally get rid of this line if you want. And so now that everything is implemented, well, it's actually the time well to test my code. So to actually display the preview. So I'm going to display my preview. So I do command option and enter. Then I'm going to click resume. 
And so my preview is going to load. So as you can see in the static preview, there is nothing. So this is totally normal. It's because well, the static preview, it only works with Swift UI views. When you have a UI kit view that is accessible through a UI view controller representable, well, you need to actually start the live preview. So you need to click on the play button right here. And now, as you can see, everything is working as expected. My UI kit view controller is now accessible in Swift UI preview and I can interact with it. For instance, as you can see, the scrolling is going to work as expected. So why should you take away from this video? Well, as we've seen, it's not because you are working on UI kit components that's actually not possible for you to take advantage of the benefits of using a Swift UI preview. Because as we've seen, well, you just need to actually make your UI view controller accessible to Swift UI through the UI view controller representable protocol. And once you have done this, well, you are able to display your UI kit view controller in a Swift UI preview, just like you would do with any regular Swift UI view. Now, of course, there is no magic in it. And as you've seen, well, this technique comes with two possible drawbacks. So the first drawback is that for every UI kit view controller that you want to display in a Swift UI preview, you need to write this type right here that is going, well, we could say, to bridge UI kit with Swift UI. Now, the nice thing here is that, well, you wouldn't necessarily need to write this code by hand. Depending on the architecture of your app, it's very possible that you could use a code generation tool like Sorcery to generate, well, this entire code for you. And the second drawback is that, as we've seen, a static Swift UI preview is not going to work with a UI kit component. You need to use a live preview by clicking on the button right here. And of course, when I clicked on the button, well, the code executed very quickly because for this video, I am using a very small project with only a few files. But if you have a big project and when you instantiate a view controller, there are a lot of dependencies that are being instantiated. Well, it's very possible that when you start your live preview, it's going to take a bit of time. And in a big project, well, it's very possible that starting the live preview would take a bit more time than it did for me in this video. But still, regardless of these two drawbacks, I think that this technique of using a Swift UI preview to display UI kit components really has a lot of potential well, to speed up your development process. So I would really recommend well, that you try it out. And well, if you find it to be actually useful and to speed up well, the way that you develop your app, please let me know in the comments. I am as always super curious to hear what is your feedback on the content of the video. Once again, a big thank you to Stream for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.